Welcome back. So, part two. Part 2A this will be, I think, because um, I'll have to split this up um, because these things take a little bit of time to build. But we need to create our three servers. So I said before, and I'll just go back in here, we're going to have three servers, a workstation, a chef server, and a chef node. So chef workstation, chef server, chef node. We're going to have a private network and a public network. So what I'm going to do first is here's my um, virtual box. Within VirtualBox, I have previously built a CentOS 6.6 server with VBox editions so that I can actually get the GUI, full GUI up and play around with it and use that as a template. And I guess a lot of people do this. So this template, I'm going to clone it to be the first machine, Chef Workstation. So let's go in there and do a clone. Um, we're going to call this the Chef Workstation. I'm going to reinitialize the MAC address and then that will create a clone. It will ask me do I want a full clone or a link clone. I definitely want a full clone. So that's going to copy the entire content of the template CentOS66.vdi uh, you know, hard drive uh, on my system and it's going to make a complete copy for me so that then we have our first machine. I'm going to do this obviously twice more um, to actually copy over the other two servers. So we're going to have a chef server and a chef node. So those will get created. That's the first one. There it is. I'll just drag that up to the top here. There's our chef workstation. Uh, you can probably guess here some of the other upcoming videos as well um, are going to be around uh, using DevStack and, and OpenStack DevStack and uh, doing some uh, future work on OpenStack on software. But uh, for today, it's Chef, so that's number one. Number two, we're gonna clone this, and we're gonna have Chef Server. Click that, same thing, full clone, clone. So that's clone number two. That will give us our Chef Server. Now we've just got left the Chef node. So I'm gonna do exactly the same again. Um, if you're following along, I couldn't recommend more that you build template machines. Um, I've got some templates here of Ubuntu, um, Saucy, or sorry, that's Trusty, um, so that I can do the OpenStack stuff that I've been playing around with as well. I've also been using CentOS 7. I couldn't recommend it enough because once you've got the templates, it makes doing this piece of the work much easier then getting the uh, CD ISO out and actually uh, creating machines. Uh, another way of going, of course, is use Vagrant, just Vagrant up machines. But I like to have the GUI, so I'm making full clones of these. Um, Chef node, final machine, click on that, continue, full clone, clone. Okay, so that's going to take you know, a minute or two, and we will have all three machines available to get going on part 2B, where we will configure our network. So join me in a second when part, in part 2B, when we'll actually configure the network for these machines. We have all of our virtual machines. We have our Chef Workstation, our Chef Server, and our Chef Node. And we'll pick it up with doing the network configuration on these machines. So there's our Chef Workstation. We're going to start with it. Um, we want a public, so that's fine, bridge adapter is good, and we want a private. So to create a private, let's go to VirtualBox, Preferences. We will create a private network as a host only network. Hit the little plus sign here, it looks like a little green interface. Hit that, you'll get VBox3, and we said this was gonna be on a 10021 network. You can leave the netmask the same, that's absolutely fine. So that's created a network for us. Now we're going to add, so you click on the network bit there. We're going to add the network. Adapter 1's fine. That's our bridged adapter for our public network interface. We're going to add a host only adapter on VBoxNet 3 network that we just created. It's going to be a para virtualized network, and we're going to allow the VMs to talk to each other on that. Okay, so let's boot this machine and we're going to have to configure the host name and the networking. 
Give that a couple of seconds and we'll get going on it. We've got our machine, it's fully booted up. Let's see what's happening on the network side of things. Yeah, I'm not surprised that that's spinning away. Oh, let me just resize this screen to make sure you've got it just like I have. Um, so, system tools, terminal, um, sudo su minus. Let's get to root straight away. So let's do an IF config and see what the state of these networks are. Unsurprisingly, we have ETH1 and ETH2. And this is probably spinning because of ETH2. So let's fix that first. Let's go to cd etc sysconfig slash network minus scripts ls um, vi ifcfg dash eth zero. Okay, that's the wrong hardware address on there. That's fine. That's the old one that came across on the cloning. Um, we want to take our ETH1 address here, copy that, and we're going to VI that file again, and we want to put that in as the hardware address on ETH0. So let's get that done first. Um, we can take that out, that's fine. Okay, copy IFCFG ETH. 0 to ifcfg eth1. We want to grab the hardware address of eth2, as it says here, and we want to vi eth1. We want to get rid of this, and we want to paste this in. Okay. Make that ETH1, get rid of that because we are giving this an IP address of 10.0.2.15 and a net mask of 245.255.255.0. Lovely. Right. Um, I'll tell you what, let's just go for a service network restart. See what happens here. Okay, let's do an IF config. So we have ETH1 on our bridged adapter and ETH2 on our private network. Lovely. So let's do a host name. Um, this is our chef workstation. Do a host name and I'll put that to ETC host name. And then finally, vi etc slash hosts. And in here, we're going to go for 10, 0, 2, 15 is our chef workstation. Startation. I'm really suffering today. Chef workstation. 10, 0, 2, 60 is our chef or will be our chef server dot satisfied limited dot com chef server and ten zero two that would be ten zero two oh my word seventeen and that is our chef node perfect Save that. Excellent. Let's do a quick reboot. Make sure we get everything coming up the way we expect. Okay. Couple of seconds. Bang. Come on, machine. That's what we like to see. Everything shooting along and up it comes. Um, hmm. Doesn't seem to have the, the host name. Oh, it 
doesn't have the house name. Huh. How bizarre. Did it not take these? Shift workstation, that's fine. I have config. Two UTC hosts, it's absolutely fine. Ten zero two fifteen. Okay, bizarre. Um, what we do want to do is make this ETH zero and ETH one. So to do that, we cd to etc udev rules dot d, and we do vi seventy dash persistent network rules. Wow, what have we got in here? Wow, a nine a, a nine c, a nine. Oof, dear a word. This doesn't look good at all. That's not what we want at all. Um, let's remove that entirely. And it will recreate this file. Right, let it recreate that file and let's see what we end up with in that file. This is a, a tied over from when uh, you clone machines. So it's no big deal. We'll get this sorted. So this reboot will take slightly longer now because udev is going to run udev admin. Now that's gone pretty quick. Slight sluggishness here. That's the udev stuff done. Excellent. Right, let's log in. Ah, finally, Chef Workstation. Good. That's more like it. You get that tide over from uh, the network, looks good. Let's see. Terminal. I have config. We have ETH1 and ETH0, and we can ping. Well, maybe if I put in dub dub dub. Google.com. Lovely. It's exactly where we wanted to be. So our chef workstation is now up, running, perfect. We have. ETH0, ETH1, all running fine. Let's do the same on the other two. Um, in fact, I'm going to leave that machine up and running there. Let's go to the Chef server. Here we go. And let's add a network. Adapter 2 will be host only adapter, VBOXnet 3, allow VMs. And hit OK. Right, let's boot that up. And while that's booting, I'll pause this and get ready for configuring its network. You may have noticed my small error at the very end of the last part, so I just wanted to cover that again, that when I added the network in here, so I'll just click that again, I actually chose the host-only network, chose VBOX3, but then forgot to change this to Power Virtualized. Um, so I'm going to just change that now and now I'm going to kick it off again. So let's get our chef server done. Up it comes. And we're going to do exactly the same again. We're going to add its host name. Uh, it needs a fully qualified domain name. Uh, we're going to do the IFCFG files and we're going to get this thing going and pinging the other one. Um, so. Let's get in here and see what we've got. Network spinning, we expect that at this moment in time. Uh, terminal, let's get to root. Okay, let's do the IF config and see what we've got. We've got an ETH1 just like we had on the other one, an ETH2. This time we got 
192.168.0111. Uh, that's exactly what we'd expect. etc sysconfig slash network minus scripts. Um, we want to take this because this will be our zero address. We want to vi ifcfg dash eth zero. There's the tied over address from the past, from when it got cloned. We want to pop in our new one. Get rid of that. That's fine. We want to copy ifcfg dash eth zero to ifcfg dash eth one. Oops. I F. Perfect. We want to VI that file. We're going to take this hardware address into our ETH1, what will be our 1 in a minute. Uh, get rid of that. It's a 1. Paste in our new address. It won't be. DHCP, we are going to be using an IP address, which is 10.0.2.16, and its net mask is 255.0. So, uh, service network restart. Let's see what happens. Okay. I have config, ETH1, ETH2, lovely. Our spinner has stopped up here, so that's fine. <coughs> Hostname is chefserver.sassifylimited.com. I'm going to do the hostname to the etc hostname file. We're going to vi etc hosts. Just like we did on the other one. Chef workstation. <laughs> Ten zero two sixteen. This is Chef Server dot Limited dot com zero dot two dot 17 and this is our chef node lovely so they're all in the host file um, let's ping chef workstation make sure we can get through to it that's fine whoops so yeah everything's absolutely working fine let's ping um, 190 uh, sorry Let's just check the external connectivity. And DNS is all working, so that's absolutely fine. Uh, the only thing we have to deal with now is ETH1 and ETH2. So I'm going to do exactly what I did before and remove the... Well, in fact, let's go and have a look at it. Um, etc udev slash um, rules dot d slash 70 minus persistent net what have we got in here so it thinks the old address is still there and then it's got a 40 a 4a and an e4 4a it's saying is eth1 okay so we could just modify this file we could delete it um i tell you what this time let's uh Let's do it this way. So 4a is ETH0. And E4 is ETH1. Let's just double check that. So 4a on ETH0. 4a, yep. And ETH1, E4, E4. Perfect. Okay. Okay, let's reboot and we should have our server up and running, our chef server. <coughs> 
Let's see what happens. We would like this to show a nice quick streak across here so that it's working nice and fast. And that looked pretty good. I want to see green on my little network down here, which is going green, so that's lovely. How's our network spinner? Not spinning, perfect, that's what we want. Let's go to the terminal. It's the chef server, so its host name is good. And it's ifconfig, should have zero and one. Perfect, that's what we want to see and ping chef workstation it is on the 10.02 so it's going across the private network to ping that um, I can bring in now our old because we still have it up and running our old chef workstation and let's ping our chef server on the 10.02.16 so perfect Got a nice little symphony of pings going. Excellent. That's what we want to see. Everything's working on those two machines. Let's put those aside and go for machine number three. Mains to do the chef node. Here's our chef node. Network again, just like we did the last time. Add an adapter. Host only. VBoxNet 3. Para virtualized, which I forgot the last time. Allow VMs, and that's on the 3F, and the other one is on a 6.0, it looks like. Okay, there's our two networks, we're fine. Start this machine, let's get this up and running. And then we've got all three of our machines, which would be perfect for us. Okay, any second now. Lovely. And we're in, and how's our network looking? Whoops, I think I've got all three of these machines different sizes. It's spinning, that's what we expect. We're used to it now. Let's do an IF config even before we're going to root. ETH1 and ETH2. That's what we would expect to see. That's interesting that ETH2 has taken the address. This one may be a bit more of a pain than the other one. And that's a 192 on the 60, but that's the internal network. We can check that. Go back to network here. Just double check this again. 60. No adapter 2. Yeah, no, that's fine. 60 is the uh, 192. That's absolutely fine. I don't know why it's coming through as a, a different order, because that is the first one. That's interesting. Adapter one, adapter two. Eh, doesn't matter. Okay, sudo issue. We can fix it anyway. Um, this is only the primary primitive stuff. Let's give it its host name. It is Chef Node. Um, let's move that into etc host, well not move it, etc host name. Let's vi the etc host file while we're here, might as well just get that done. 10, 0, 2, um, 15 is our chef workstation. 10, 0, 2, 16 is our chef server. Dot um, and I'll give it an alias as well. And 17 is this machine, the chef node. Perfect, that's the host, cd etc, sysconfig, slash rules.d. It's probably worth pointing out, oh, rules.d, sorry, that's because I've got it playing around at the back of my mind. Um, network scripts we're going to go to. Um, the, it's probably worth pointing out, these are the very types of repetitive tasks that Chef is 
perfect at helping you with. These repetitive things that you do over and over again as a sysad when you're setting things up and getting things going. So you could make a recipe that would do all of these changes at any given time. It could sense for what the IP addresses should be and fill in the host file accordingly. It could fill that in from yellow pages. Um, so there's many, many ways of um, doing these repetitive tasks and using Chef as an automation tool is a fantastic way of doing it. Just, just thought it'd be worth pointing that out because we've now, we're now on go number three and it's becoming uh, somewhat of a chore. Um, even just these three machines. So I'm going to take the 3F, the 3F, no, I'm going to take the 60. Um, let's just check again, just do a double check. Um, 60 is our adapter for DHCP, so that's fine. Um, so in here we're going to buy the IFCFG-E0. We know that this is a tied over from the past. We know that it should have this address. We're going to get rid of that and that's fine. We're now going to copy that IFCFG-ETH0 to IFCFG-ETH1. We're going to grab the other address the F, the 3F address, we know that this is our para virtualized network. And we're going to go in here and we're going to change this. Getting rid of that, its IP address is 10.0.2.17. And its net mask is 255, 255, 255, 0. I'm not going to hang around on this one. I'm just going to remove the etc udev rules. So I've shown you both methods, the uh, dash persistent net. I'm just going to remove that. Reboot. Let's see what happens. Hopefully we will get our networks back as zero and one and everything will be working fine. If not, we'll have a little bit more jiggery-pokery to get it done. Be nice to see this zoom along nice and quickly. Mm-hmm. That's what I like to see. Well, it's picked up our host name. How do I know? It's right there. Nice to see a nice solid network rather than a spinner. If you get a spinner here, you know something went wrong with the UDEV. And let's see what we've got. Oh, beautiful. So we've got a 112 and we've got a 217. We can ping the chef server. Lovely. We can ping the chef node. That's itself. We can ping the chef workstation. Excellent. We have our three machines. We're all up and running. Our networks are there. So that's the early bit done. That's the end of part two. Let's move on to part three. What are we going to do in part three? Well, now we have our machines up and running. Let's go back here. What are we going to do? We've done this. All our adapters are there, our public ones and our private ones. We've set up the host names, we've done the IFCFG in. Uh, we've had a bit of a play as well with, um, with our friend UDEV. So they're all there and running. The next step in the process is going to be build a chef server. Join me in part three. Let's build a chef server.